Hey, Jimmy here again, and in this week's video, I want to talk a little bit about digital minimalism. Now, it's not exactly automation, but uh, I still think it will help you get more done in less time. At least that's what I'm telling myself anyway, to say that it's still uh, on topic for this channel. But uh, digital minimalism is picking up a lot of, uh, I guess a lot of people are talking about it at the moment, which is uh, what got me interested. I heard about it originally on the Tropical MBA podcast. I heard uh, Dan Andrews and Cal Newport were having a chat uh, because Cal Newport wrote a book literally called Digital Minimalism. Um, and they talk about a lot of different things. Um, and one of the things that really, uh, I guess, jumped out to me was a few things, but one of them was uh, just basically how bad being connected constantly is for us. And specifically, they talked about the rise in anxiety and depression uh, among that, like the new generation that don't know a world without the internet and social media, which is kind of crazy to think about. But uh, yeah, I mean, some of these, and there's basically like a, a clear, uh, I don't know, like correlation, whatever, that uh, they, these guys are more prone to anxiety and depression. Like, obviously, that doesn't mean that's the actual case, but um you know, research is being done. And to be honest, I've noticed some pretty significant shifts in myself from social media. Um, and that's why it really got me thinking about wanting to do something about it. So I actually wrote a, uh, a blog post about it uh, a few weeks ago, outlining my plan of how I was going to do, like well, become a more of a digital minimalist. And uh, I will also link that up uh, below, but I'm going to dig through a little bit about my plan uh, and how it's been working so far, and so maybe uh, inspire you, or hopefully inspire you to do a little bit of the same thing. Because I've been like tinkering with this for a long time, you know, like trying not to have the phone in the bedroom, or you know, doing little bits here and there, turning certain notifications off, but not really committed. And I think it took this to really make that change and just make me go, look, I'm going to do it, um, and. I honestly think um, I've been better off for it so far. Uh, but yeah, so first, I guess the things that hit me the hardest, like and like I mentioned before, with the uh, like things I've noticed in myself, and I've definitely like with social media, I've noticed a few things. So um, I find myself comparing myself with other people, you know, and and sometimes it's not even comparing myself with those people, it's like the projected person, you know, like you don't actually know uh, what's going on for in re like in someone's real life. Sometimes it's just kind of this projection on social media. And I'm not like accusing people because I've fallen into this trap before where people have said like, Oh my God, like it's so cool. You're doing this, this and this and this and this. And I'm sitting here going, my life really isn't that cool. So I don't, I'm sorry I projected that. Um, so anyway, my point being is like, it's very, you're comparing yourself. Well, I, I was comparing myself with people. I know a lot of people do this as well. Um, but yeah, and then the worst part is you comparing yourself with like, so something is not even real half the time. So uh, that's not healthy. Um, Another thing is like drawing out, uh, like seeing posts that draw out negative emotions, like in some way, you know, like if I see like an anti-vaxxer thing or something and it might make me mad or, you know, that, that's just one example. Um, you know, anything that I'm passionate about, like in the other way, like negatively, I guess, and I see someone doing it, it's going to make me mad. And really there's, there's no benefit in like, uh, like me getting angry is just useless. So, um, I think I, I think the quote is, I'll probably butcher this, but like anger is a, uh, it's like holding onto a hot coal with the intention of throwing it at someone else. And so I don't want to be like that. Um, and I think the easiest way for me is just to cut myself off from even reading that kind of thing. So like comment sections are the worst for that. You see like the worst of humanity come out in comment sections. So like I, I swore off that a while ago, um, which you probably might've seen the video on that on this channel. Uh, but you know, now I'm just cutting it off altogether. Um, so yeah, basically a couple of other dot points here. I've got, uh, you know, loads of time spent for minimal gain, which is true because in the beginning, I thought I needed social media for my business, you know, and, and like in a way I owe a lot of, uh, I guess the audience that we've built 
and like feedback for Content Snare, which is our software product. Like I've got a lot of benefit from social media, um, especially through Facebook groups. Um, but I don't think it's proportional to the amount of time I've spent. I think I've just been spending too much time in general uh, on other things when I could just be focusing on the right things uh, on social media and getting the same level of benefit and getting the same interaction with people. So that's another thing to think about. And I think overall, uh, this time, I mean, this is what I was like sort of predicting three weeks ago is like the the time spent um, would like, the, now that I'm not spending that time anymore, it would free up like mental space to uh, focus on other things. And I've found that's absolutely been the case so far, but I'll dig into that more later. But it isn't just about social media either. So uh, I, this really got me thinking about something that I do and a lot of people I know do. And honestly, it's like I've heard a lot of people saying, like giving advice to listen to like podcasts and audiobooks all the time. Uh, you know, like when you're driving or when you're walking or like doing all the things, also listening to podcasts. So then you're like not wasting that time. Uh, and I was so guilty of this and I've even said it a bunch of times, you know, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say, um, you know, that you should be using all this time to, to keep learning and blah, blah, blah. But I've realized it basically gave me no space at all to just think. Uh, so if I think back, some of the best business decisions I've made or best like problems that I've solved have been while walking with either silence or like nature sounds i guess or or uh like maybe some music without lyrics or something that just allows me to just think about stuff uh think about a problem so uh, i've been enjoying getting back to that and using that kind of downtime to actually solve problems in my business instead of listening to podcasts with new information now it's probably pretty ironic that uh this is being broadcast on a podcast and a youtube channel uh, and I'm going to say, like, don't listen to as many podcasts, but I still think, like, I haven't cut off podcasts com completely. I think you just have to be more selective about the ones you listen to or not just listening for listening's sake. You know, like, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I kind of get like podcast FOMO where I'm, I'm wondering like, oh, well, I like, look through the list and I'm like, oh, that sounds like a it might be relevant to me so I better listen to that one and then I listen to like an hour long thing uh, of course on like 1.5 speed or something but I get to the end and I realize that I've got nothing out of it um, that happens more often than not now um, so really it's just making decisions about which ones to like to listen to uh, and being more selective so you know I go through my list and unless it's something like a guest I really want to listen to or a topic that I am really wanting to solve now I kind of just go past it uh, and I think that's okay um, I for now I'd rather take that time to think maybe I'll reintroduce more as time goes on and I'm still gonna have time dedicated for learning like Fridays are a big day for that um so you know you, you guys might know i'm a pretty big fan of daily theming which i uh, learned from mr mike vardy at the productivityist productivityist yep uh actually i think he's changed his business name to time crafting now but uh yeah check him out he's awesome but yeah that's that's where my idea to sort of make fridays a, a learning and research day um, so on those days, I'm very happy to, you know, listen to something while I'm walking or whatever. As long as I'm not doing it every single time I go for a walk or every time I go to the gym. I was, yeah, I was even listening to podcasts at the gym, which people think is weird, but somehow it worked for me. Um, yeah. So now I'm going to dig a little bit into, I guess, my plan, which I've kind of already dug into already. Um, <laughs> and, and like I said, it was reintroducing podcasts again. But um, I guess I've covered the podcast thing. Now, I, I, what I haven't really talked about is is actual phone use and social media use. So the first, I guess they kind of tie in together. Like uh, a lot of my social media use was from a phone when I'm just sitting idle. You know, like the, the other day I was waiting for my physio appointment uh, in the waiting room. And my first instinct was to pull out my phone and start reading. And I was like, nope, not doing that anymore. Uh, like start flicking through stuff. So 
Um, a while ago, I turned off Facebook notifications from my phone. I'd say most of you have probably done that at this point. Um, I saw someone on my Facebook yesterday, actually, in my allotted Facebook time, which I'll get to. Um, <laughs> I saw someone had basically turn their notifications off for the first time. And I was like, wow, I didn't know people still did that. So if you're still getting notifications from Facebook, like your fa phone actually lights up and makes noise, man, turn that off like right away. Um, that's like a, one of the biggest things, but um, it, it's obviously not a, uh, a, f a complete fix because I still wasted a lot of time on social media after that. So um, yeah, all my notifications are now off because I still had Twitter turned on. So now that's off. Um, the only notifications I get are like calls or um, like messages. So I still have Facebook Messenger as notifications just with no sound. Uh, and WhatsApp uh, comes through to me because I use that to talk to my friends and stuff. And yeah, so those, those get a pass uh, from my no notifications rule. Uh, but as I mentioned briefly before, I was on Facebook during my allotted time. So that's, that's my second part of this plan is kind of time blocking it like email. So another thing that, uh, uh, Dan Andrews and Cal Newport were talking about is that social media professionals don't actually use social media, like flicking through on Facebook. They use it from a computer to do a dedicated thing using like an interface to schedule you know, like something like Buffer or Hootsuite or whatever. Like this is how the professionals are actually using it. It's just us that are like swiping through it. Um, so that made me go, okay, I've got to do something like that. Uh, and so now I have dedicated time, uh, usually between 11 and 12 uh, in the morning where I'm allowed to check Facebook. Uh, and that's the same for my email too. I generally try to stick out of email instead of certain blocks. Um, if you're not familiar with time blocking, it's literally just picking out some time like each week or whatever. So it could be every day, you know, 11 to 12 is what this is. I can check email on Facebook. Um, and then actually having a plan on how I use Facebook. So it's not just open it and have a look through. It is uh, go to my notifications and have a look through and see if there's anything that I need to action or it's important. Like someone's tagged me in a post about content snare that someone else is asking a question. I can get in there and answer it. Someone has responded to one of my questions in my Facebook group. Um, so that's pretty much it. It's time now in my Facebook group and checking my important notifications. And on that, uh, you can actually be selective with your Facebook notifications. And I'm not talking about phone ones. I mean, like when you click that little icon in the app and it shows you the list, uh, you can actually start blocking certain things. You know, if you, <laughs> I've, def I've blocked a few people, not like on Facebook, but just blocked certain types of things from them. Uh, if you didn't know you could do that, super handy. So if you've got like a pesky, person that keeps inviting you to events all the time and you don't want those notifications, you can actually block that. Uh, if they just make constant events, like I guess some marketing people do that and it's annoyed the crap out of me and I didn't want to block them completely. So you can just block event uh, invites from a certain person uh, so they can really clean up your notification center. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. That's my like Facebook and social plan. Um, then, and then the second part of this is the actual phone use, right? So um, I think I'm, I'm almost certain that iPhone has it, uh, that it counts up like your time spent on your phone each day. Google's got that now through uh, digital wellbeing. Uh, that's what I use. And um, I'm, it's almost like gamified, like how low I can get my... Uh, um, my screen time each day and then but then I get real funny about it because I don't even want to use Google Maps because I know it's going to contribute to my screen time I wish I could turn that off but maybe they'll allow that in a future version because I'm like that's not, that's not counted if I need to get navigation and I'm like got it set up in the car or something telling me where to go that's it's not fair <laughs> but um, it's it's been really cool for me to watch that like drop um but a few things for that. Um, I mean, it's quite hard to get out of that habit of constantly checking your phone. Uh, if you're like, a lot of us are addicted to it. I definitely was, you know, like I, I found myself, I used to like, when I play video games, uh, in between like games, there might be a 30 second window, for example. And I found myself like grabbing my phone and scrolling through Facebook for that 30 seconds, you know, like that's how often, 
uh, I was digging through stuff and I'm like, this is crazy. And um, the other day I was having a game and I found, I, I registered that, like my brain went, okay, grab my phone. And I realized it wasn't there with me. And I was like, holy crap, like this is how much it's just become part of how we think. Uh, so yeah, this has been big. Um, the two things, like a, one of the biggest things I think is having your phone in another room when you don't need it. You know, like if you're having dinner or hanging out with a family, it's in the office or the bedroom, uh, or, you know, hell it can be like when I was, when I might be playing games or something, it just could be on the bench. As long as it's not within, uh, arm's reach of me, uh, then it's fine. So give that a go. Uh, the, uh, the other one is not leaving your, not bringing the phone into the bedroom at all. Uh, I used to do this. This is a, a lot of people I know do this now. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't, uh, because I often use my phone to listen to maybe an audio book, like a, a fiction book. That's kind of what I've been doing before bed, listening to some fiction books. Um, and I need my phone to play that. So, um, my little hack is uh, put it on airplane mode. It's kind of the same as not having it with you. Uh, you can still use it as an alarm. Um, yeah, it'd be just don't use Facebook and stuff on it. And you don't look at it first thing in the morning. That requires a little bit of uh, self-discipline. But um, yeah, that's, like, that's another thing. I will not look at the phone uh, as soon as I wake up. I used to sit in bed and like check email and stuff. I know a lot of people do that. Um, and I used to, but I just forced myself not to. Now I, you know, I'll go and do my morning routine, make a coffee, come back to the computer, and that's when the email starts or whatever, you know, when anything starts. Um, just a little note for service businesses, like if you're a web agency or something, uh, and you need clients to be able to call you, because uh, that, that's one of the biggest, I think, things people always bring up here is like, I need, you know, clients to be able to call me. I would recommend having windows that your clients can call you in, you know, whether that is in the afternoons or in the mornings or, you know, even like a couple of hours a day. Uh, and if they call out of that, you don't pick up and you don't pick up because the phone's in the other room and you didn't even hear it. Uh, so that's what I would recommend. I mean, I guarantee, like I know some, some of you or some people will say that it's just not possible in their business, but maybe, maybe it isn't but just try and find a way to get rid of that phone as much as possible. Um, I think you'll be better off for it. And obviously less distractions and less interruptions is always good. Um, you know, maybe if it's sales calls you're worried about getting, maybe have some kind of like virtual number that someone else can answer on your behalf and take a message and you call back or they message you immediately or something. Um, if it's an important one, I don't know, this is something for you to work out, but there's usually a way around stuff. <laughs> All right. So that is pretty much everything I've been doing and how much I've been enjoying it so far. I, I've got a note here to like talk about um, how much I've like, you know, fast forward three weeks where I'm at, um, you know, but I've kind of sprinkled it through there already. So, uh, you know, I've, I've enjoyed it. I've had more mental headspace. I've felt like I've had a lot more time. Uh, I like whether that's how much time I, I don't have a, you know, a real amount. I can't tell you how much time I was spending on Facebook. Well, actually I probably could if I went through my phone and, and looked at, uh, screen time on certain apps each day. Um, but I honestly feel like I'm getting way more done in less hours, you know, like I haven't even been doing full, full work days or whatever. And I feel like I've been getting lots done and being like running out of stuff that's on my list and being, Oh, what, what, what do I do? So, uh, that's kind of cool. Um, if yeah, so I just, I'd recommend giving it a go. And one little thing. Uh, so I've, and just so, you know, nobody's perfect. I just wanted to sort of wrap up here with a little bit about where I failed. Uh, cause nobody's perfect except Lee Jackson from agency trailblazer. He's, he's an amazing dude, but, uh, <laughs> we all make mistakes. And so I just, I guess to make this a bit more real and not be sitting here going, Oh, I'm perfect. And I don't look at my phone anymore. Uh, 
because, you know, that would be projecting that thing I was talking about on social media. Uh, this is not real. I've definitely failed a whole bunch in the last three weeks. Um, you know, like sometimes I've accidentally had that phone next to me when I'm watching Netflix or something and I pick it up and start scrolling. And I'm like, damn it. Like I normally realize fairly quickly uh, and then just go and put it somewhere else. Um, you know, like I don't, you've just got to sort of register and then make that change, you know, put the phone away. Um, and another one that I fall victim to a lot is when I open Facebook to actually check a notification or check a message. So this is an annoying one. Like if I want to see a message that someone sent me on Facebook, um, I open it to look at it and then next minute the news feeds there and I forget what I'm even doing and start scrolling. So I've done that a few times. I think I need to just like bookmark messenger by itself. I haven't I've got to look into that. Um, I'm not sure if you can just go to straight to messenger.com anymore. That used to be a thing. Uh, I think it makes you, they probably will learn people are trying to be minimalist and force you back to Facebook now. I don't know, but um, I'm just trying to pull it up right as I, as I say this and it's not, Oh, look at that. You can go directly to messenger. So maybe that's, that's an answer. There is, um, I only open messenger.com, uh, instead of going to Facebook. There you go. Just fixed another problem. Um, and another time I massively failed is I got really sick earlier this week with some kind of random 24 hour bug. I don't know what the hell it was, but it knocked me over and I was on the couch for hours and I spent hours on social because I couldn't sleep and I had nothing else to do. So there we go. I said it out loud. Um, I, that was a huge failing, failing of a day, but look, it was one day and now I'm back on that horse. So yeah, I think, I mean, I mean there's always going to be times where you might want to break the rules too. Like we're all adults here. We can make adult decisions. If you need to jump on Facebook for some reason, and it's outside your like special window, you can do it. Just have some self-control and don't go scrolling through the newsfeed. That's pretty much it, right? Like we don't need to have like hard and fast rules that can never be broken. It's just uh, a general, like as long as you're going in the right direction and doing less uh, like social stuff, less phone time and, and giving yourself some headspace uh, occasionally more over time, um, I think I think we win. So that's it. I uh, hope this helped. Uh, and I hope you this inspires you to become a little bit more of a digital minimalist. If you have any questions or if you want to report back and how it's going for you, please leave a comment. Um, yeah, that's all. And I'll see you next time. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and you'll learn a whole bunch of different stuff about how to automate your business and do less work. <laughs>